So this next case, you've been told in a geometric progression, the fourth term exceeds the fifth term by 4, and the sum of these two terms is 20. Determine the common ratio, the first term, and the sum of the first seven terms. So the first thing you do is to read the question, you digest it, and you identify the unknown, isn't it? So after reading the question, you identify it is a geometric progression. It is a G, a GP. So before you start filtering what is in the question, you have to identify the unknowns of a GP, isn't it? And the unknowns of a GP, you know that the first term of a GP is given by A. And you know that the common ratio of a GP is given by R, isn't it? And you know that the nth term of a GP is given by A, R, N minus so if you can't recall that, you simply go and you put your first term and you know a GP specifically uses multiplication, isn't it? So that A times R gives you AR, AR times R gives you AR squared, AR times R gives you a cube. So you know this is first, second, third, fourth. So both times you can see it's raised to power 3, meaning it is 4 minus 1, N minus 1. So you should have recalled the formula, isn't it? Then the next thing you need to know about the GP is that the sum of n terms of a GP is given by A into R raised to power n minus 1 over R minus 1. And that formula you read from the table, if you've not mastered it, but you've derived it, isn't it? You read it from the table. Remember, it is not A R n minus 1. It is A R minus 1. 1 is a different term from A raised to R raised to power n, isn't it? That is the reason why it is important when we are deriving some kind of, that's why it is important for us to derive them so that you know the difference instead of bringing the confusion later, isn't it? So, after identifying the unknowns is when you now go back to the question and you start reading the question, isn't it? So you read the question in a geometric progression, the fourth term. So once you read the fourth term, you come and record fourth term. So what is a fourth term? You go to the unknowns, meaning we are talking about n term, isn't it? So both term means where there is n you put for to make both term, isn't it? So both term where there is n you put for it will be 4 minus 1, isn't it? So both term will be a r q. So the fourth term exceeds the fifth term. So can you come and identify the fifth term before you join that statement, isn't it? Are we together? So what is the fifth term when n is 5, isn't it? So the fifth term will be a r 5 minus 1, isn't it? That is a r raised to power. Four. So once you identify the fourth term and the fifth term, go back to the equation and join that's join them together with the statement which is there, isn't it? What have you been told? The fourth term exceeds the fifth term by something which exists and other means it is greater than the fifth term by four, isn't it? Meaning they're trying to tell you that if the fourth term is ten, then the fifth term is six. Because the fourth term exceeds the fifth term by four, meaning it is greater than ten. Fifth term by four. Are you seeing a control, a control case to, to, to master the statement of that problem, isn't it? Are you seeing that? So it means if you say you just let a known value to help you master the statement of the question, isn't it? If you let the fourth term to be 10, it means the fifth term will be 6, so that you are able to see that 10 exceeds 6 by 4, is greater than 6 by 4. Are you seeing that? Yes. So what is the statement from this? It means that 10 minus 6 gives you and the 10 is your fourth term, meaning the statement means that it is fourth term minus fifth term should give you, you use a known case to form an equation from the unknown case. Are you seeing that? Are we together? Yes. So have you seen the statement coming out of that? Yes. Are we together? Good. So you see fourth term exists, the fifth term by four, meaning fourth term minus the fifth term, you should see that value, isn't it? should be equal to 4. You have formed equation, equation 1. Then you move on. And the sum of these two terms, the sum of these two terms, meaning if you add these two terms, isn't it? Yes. So that means the sum of these two terms. So the sum of the two terms is what? The fourth term is a raised to power 3 plus the fifth term is a raised to power 4. So the, term, the sum of these two terms, isn't it? The sum of these two terms is, is equal to, isn't it? Is what? Is 20. That is Roman? Roman 2. Now, if you look at this, what do you do? This one is very simple, isn't it? Are we together? Because this one you can use in elimination of the score, senior. So you can subtract the two equations to eliminate this. Are 
Isn't that? Really? Very simple. Are you together? Elimination can easily deal with this. So the first thing you need to know here is this. That is the end of the equation. The one, the common ratio, the first term, and the sum of the of the seven seven terms. So let us start. One thing I need you to tell me: there is one more, there is one more Roman here. From the statement of the geometric progression, what we learn, there is one more equation here. Who can tell me that equation? There's supposed to be three equations from this case. I'm seeing there's one. We just, you, you have to be someone who has mastered the concept. When you are talking about a GP, when you are talking about a fourth term and a fifth term, see, we are talking about consecutive terms. Meaning, fourth term, because it uses specifically multiplication, fourth terms times R gives you. Gives you what? The fifth? The fifth term. Okay, even if you don't use that, let us start here and try to simplify this problem. How can we simplify this problem? Do we use elimination or substitution? Which one is simpler? See, elimination will first of all make it more simpler. So that we put A in terms of A in terms of R. We can make A the subject in each case, A the subject, then we, we make R. So can we make A the subject of the so that we use substitution. So here, A is a common factor. So we have A into R cubed minus R raised to power. Are you seeing that? Yes. A into R cubed minus R raised to power. Which is supposed to what? Then here we have A into R cubed plus. Because A is a common factor here. I can see that is the easiest way to do it. Substitution, isn't it? It's supposed to what? 20. So if you make A the subject of the formula here, what will you have? So you will divide both sides by this. Are we together? Yes. You will get A to be 4 over R cube minus Then this other one, if you make A the subject of the formula, so you will divide by this Both sides Then you will get A is 20 over R cube plus See that is what is there See you make one thing the subject of the formula, then you use substitution is the best method, isn't it? Is that okay? Now are we together there? Good so, we made A the subject of this first and A the subject of this. So that substitution is the easiest method to use. Meaning, all you need to do is to identify. Is the elimination the easiest method or is the substitution? Because when you are using elimination here, you will still remain with your AR, which of course will give you the third equation, which will be even be more easier to use when you worry about the value of R here, isn't it? Are you seeing that? So both substitution and elimination will be working, but substitution alone is enough to give you the value of R by making A the subject, isn't it? So A is this, A is this, meaning this equation is equal to this equation, isn't it? So we have 4 over R cubed minus R to power 4 is equal to 20 over R plus R raised to power 4. Are you seeing that? What do we do? See, we cross multiply. Send yes. So if you cross multiply this, we have this side. Meaning it is like you multiply both sides of the equation by this to eliminate it here, then it will come here, isn't it? Then you multiply both sides of the equation with this to eliminate it here, then it will go there. That is what I mean by cross multiplying, isn't it? Yes. So here we have 4 times this, isn't it? So we have 4 into r cubed plus r to the power 4 is equal to 20 times that, isn't it? 20 into R cubed minus Is it? So can you get 4 inside? 4 Plus 4 Common factor, isn't it? Can you type 20 inside? 20 R cubed minus It is the common factor, isn't it? Are we together? So you can make R is to power 4 on one side of the equation And R cubed on the other side of the equation, isn't it? Isn't it? So, let us make maybe R raised to power 4 as a higher power we bring it this side, isn't it? So, R raised to power 4 minus 20 R raised to power 4 coming this side See, it is going to be plus So, plus 20 R raised to power 4 plus 4 R raised to power 4 You get a total long R raised to power 4 Then the other side we have 20 R raised to power 3 See, this 4 R raised to power 3 goes on the other side 
plus 4 raised to the 3 goes to the other side, it becomes minus, isn't it? So 20 raised to the 3 minus 4 raised to the 3, you get? 16 raised to the power? Are you seeing that? Which kind of equation is that? Let me rub that part because I've used it. See, just leave the part for the equation. See, this is a quadratic equation. Meaning, here, when you bring this side, you get 2 factor x and this is 0. But when r is 0, when the common ratio is 0, it means this equation does not exist, doesn't it? So, this study of making it quadratic, it is just a matter of simplifying by dividing with the common factor, isn't it? Because when you make it for it's like you are dividing both sides by by r square, so that you remain with 20 r square is equal to 16 r. When you bring 16 this side, it is quadratic. Then you get one of the solutions of r to be zero. And when r is zero, it means this problem does not exist. So there's no need of making it quadratic. You divide by both sides by r cubed with the common factor, isn't it? Yes. Are you getting the argument from the statement of that problem? Yes. So we have 24 r raised to power 4 is equal to 16 r raised to power 3. So the first thing, we divide both sides by 24, isn't it? So we remain with r raised to power 4 is equal to what is 16 divided by 24? 2 over 3. No, the idea is not saying yes, you do it. 2 over 3. 2 over 3. Then r cubed. So for us to get r, see we divide both sides by r cubed to remain with 2 over 3 there. Senior. R raised to power 4 divided by R cube, those of it is the same base with the division, you subtract the power, isn't it? So you remain with R. R. To be equal to, that goes with that. R is 2 over, so we have found the value of the common, the common ratio R. To be 2 over, are we together? After getting the common ratio R, it is now easier to get the first term, isn't it? Because you made the first term the subject of the formula, isn't it? Are we together? So you use any equation to get the first term. Remember from this equation, when you made A the subject of the formula, you found that A was 4 over R cubed minus? Because if A is a common factor, or if you use this second equation, you use any of them, isn't it? Are we together? But if I was you, I was going to use the second one because the one which uses use addition is easier to work with addition, so to it. So there, are we together? Can you now substitute the value? We will use this first one. You can as well use the second one because they are simultaneous. You will get the same answer, isn't it? So here you get four over. Then you substitute. What is R cube? R is two over three. What is two over three cube? I don't expect you to go to into that other calculator and you put two over three cube. This is not 2 over 3 cube from that fake calculator. This simply means it is 2 over 3 cube, which is not what we are looking for. Anytime you are using that calculator, you must put any fraction in bracket. Anytime you don't put a fraction in the bracket, it will always be wrong. Are you getting that? It will always be? Because you can see in this case, when it is not put in bracket, 2 over 3, when you put raised to power 3, you are looking for this, meaning you not cube with 2, and the whole thing was to be cubed, isn't it? That's why anytime you are substituting a fraction in that calculator, it must be in bracket. But this calculator is already having a fraction. You don't need that, isn't it? Are you seeing that? Are we together there? So never do this in that calculator. You will never get it. Okay? Good. So what do you get? So what is R cube? What have you found? 8 over? 27. 8 over 27. Then it is minus. What is R raised to power 4? 16 over 81. Yes, so at the end, what do you get to be A? A is 4. What is 8 over 27 minus 16 over 81? That is 24 minus 16 is? It is like 8 over 81. What do you have? 8 over 81. So use your calculator. 4 divided by 8 over 81. What do you have? It should be like this in that calculator. 4 divided by in bracket 8 over 81. Any fraction must always be in bracket when you are using that calculator. And in the future you are going to see that calculator is not going to help you in this mathematics. You know the calculator you should be using here. 570 or 991. The rest will not help you to do this mathematics in the future where we are ready. Okay? So go for 570 or 991. What do you have? 
What do you have? 81 over 2, isn't it? 40.5. 40 point? 40 Are we together? It is 4 divided by 8 over 81. It's like 4 times the reciprocal of that, isn't it? 4 times 81 over 8. So you get 81 over 2. 40 point? 5. Then you would have found the first term A to be 40 point? So what else do they want you to get? The sum of the first seven terms. So how do we get the sum of n terms of a geometric progression? You found it to be a in bracket r raised to power n minus over r minus. So when they talk about first seven terms, meaning they are telling you where there is n you put? Seven. You put seven. Where there is n you put? Seven. So can you now get me the answer? What you are now doing is substitution. Where there is a, you put the value of. Are we together? What is the value of a? Forty point. Then in bracket r raised to power seven. What is r? Two over. So can you raise two over three to power seven? Don't go to that level and do for me that two over three raised to power seven. That is not it. It has to be in bracket to be one thing. If you are using that other calculator, okay? Yeah, so 2 over 3 raised to power 7, would you get to be the answer for 2 over 3 raised to power 7? Then minus 1, for us to get what is inside the bracket at once, isn't it? Then minus 1, 0 point. See, you said that this thing was, you, 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 you are the one who gave us the wrong answer, you do not follow what I'm explaining. Can you press for me 2 over 3 raised to power 7, I want to see what you are doing. Is that 2 over 3? 2 over 3, then raised to power 7. Would you get to be the answer? Then answer minus 1, because we are dealing with the bracket first, isn't it? Would you get negative? Negative? Decimals. We want to deal with decimals so that those fractions. You know how to change the decimal from fraction to decimal. Where's the symbol of fraction? Negative? 0 0.94. 0 0.94? 1. 1. 4, 7. 1 for 7. So you can say 1, 5, isn't it? Four decimal places, isn't it? Over r minus 1. 2 over 3 minus 1. If you don't like working with decimals, you can leave them as fractions, okay? Are we together? You can leave them as, so if you leave them as fraction, what will you get? What did you get? Whichever, okay, whichever. You get 0 0.94, uh -huh. 1, 5. Then in the denominator, r minus 1, 2 over 3 minus 1. Negative 1 over 3. Negative 1 over 3. Negative 1 over 3. Which is negative 0. Point? 3, 3, 3. So finally, what do you get? So you can see when you are using this formula, are you using it is negative over negative? And those negative signs are going to cancel out, isn't it? Meaning if you would have used the other formula, 1 minus Rn over 1 minus R, these negatives were not going to be there and you are going to get the same thing. So using the reason why I'm saying you use any formula. Don't be dependent that, that I you use Sn is equal to A into, into R raised to power n minus 1 over R minus 1 when absolute value of R is greater than 1. Or Sn to be A into 1 minus Rn over 1 minus R when absolute value of R is greater than 1. Those ones does not matter. You use A, B. So it means when we would have used this appropriate one because you could see the value of R at R, 2 over 3 was less than 1. Meaning if we would have used this, we were not going to get this negative, but the answer was going to be the same, isn't it? Are you seeing that? You now see the argument from that statement, okay? Yeah, so you use any. You use any. So negative will go with negative. So 40.5 times this divided by that, what do you have? 100. 114.4. 114.4. 114.4 But I do prefer that when the R's and the A's are in fraction, I do prefer that you work with the fractions. Because that factor here, which is recommended, will easily deal with those fractions. I was only changing the decimal to cut for your case. But when these problems are in fraction, like R is 2 over 3, 
and you say, do I have a stupidity skisha? Do I have so that we are getting the exact value, isn't it? Are you seeing that? So that is why it is necessary to have the appropriate tool. Okay? Good. So that is how to handle such a case. That is how to handle such a case. Let us see another case.